I'm Karel Doing. I'm a visual artist and I mainly work with film and photography. Uh, I was interested in film and ecology and then sort of the, the contradiction between those. I then f started wor working with all kind of uh, organic processes. Uh, then I uh, kept on working with plants and photochemical emulsions. Basically, it's a, it's a camera-less process, as we call it, like camera-less filmmaking or camera-less photography is kind of a, a sort of known ID. Uh, a lot of kind of photographers and filmmakers work with that. Uh, in this case, um, I'm soaking the plants in a very simple solution of uh, different household chemistry, and then they release their own chemistry uh, when you bring them in contact with the photographic material. I'm not using industrial products. It's rather something that relates to the pioneers of photography because they didn't have a Kodak factory next to them. They had to kind of mix their own solutions also with things that were available. So I'm very much kind of reeling back and going to that very beginning of photography and sort of analyzing that, kind of taking it apart and putting it uh, together in a, in a slightly different way. I work in a garden, I work in a little nature reserve that's nearby. I work in parks and farms and gardens and, and sort of just sort of wild areas. Um, or anywhere where you can find plants and that's almost everywhere. And then I, I sort of decided to renovate my, an empty shed in the garden and make that into my lab. When you look at uh, the way uh, nature is uh, normally represented in art, of course, this is about aesthetics, but we always try to sort of perfect that somehow or control it or steer it. And I'm trying to let it go, uh, kind of liberate it somehow. And the plants kind of tells me like, okay, this is what I can do for you. Um, then uh, uh, I actually get the best results. This is a laboratory film, which is also much cheaper than what you would use in a camera. Um, and so I, um, I work on this two meter long film strips and then uh, I make these kind of patterns on, uh, on the film. I very much prefer the, the projection. You sort of feel that there's, that there's a real thing there. And it's kind of this, the fact that you can't really explain, that it's difficult to understand how this image is actually possible, which makes it kind of really interesting to watch. When I came into the lab, I, I very much hoped that uh, I could literally do chemical experiments in the lab. But that turned out to be quite difficult because there were a lot of restrictions. Of course, we are also talking about the periods of COVID lockdowns and so on. So therefore, I could mostly sort of shadow the, and interview the, the scientists. I made a, a series of uh, photographs where there's a, a sort of, I, I tried to um, combine the different things. So I, I, there are some more classic photographs that you see kind of what happens in the lab um, from my sort of artistic perspective. Uh, and then and there's some photography. Uh, so I used kind of my own process. And then I also used uh, some of the pictures that they produce that for them are kind of purely there for measuring a certain signal. And I sort of um, tried to kind of find also the uh, more kind of aesthetic or symbolic um, element in, in those uh, images. I also wrote an essay uh, for the book that's going to be published. Scientists are kind of wary of kind of uh, looking at the su subjective experience. They try to exclude that from their work. And uh, then again, for me, it was very interesting to see that uh, kind of the images that they produce, which are purely there to measure something, that they also have this, uh, that there's a subjective 
way that you can look at these as well. So it's about that sort of tension between the two, uh, the two points of view.